What's going on, everybody? Back here again with Justin. There's a lot to talk about with the Miami Hurricanes, number 16 currently in the country. A lot of excitement, Justin. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting into this one. Yeah, me too. Excited to uh, be back here. Had uh, some interesting games come up and, and some more ACC games in the future. So let's get into it. Yeah, and, and Happy New Year. You know, I haven't had a chance to say that to you. So, so Happy gonna... New Year. Yeah, I appreciate you doing this. This is a lot of fun. So let, let's get into it. Miami, 14-2 and two after the win against uh, Boston College, 88-72, coming back from that loss to Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech. Those are the two games I want to discuss. We'll get into some big picture stuff later. Obviously, a big one coming up against NC State. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting with that loss uh, to Georgia Tech. And it was the first – it's kind of crazy just to think back. It was their first loss since before Thanksgiving, just to kind of put it in perspective, nine wins in a row there. You know, Justin, the, the game, uh, obviously disappointing. Georgia Tech reels off those last 12 points. And, and I think some fans might look at this as, oh, is it a sign of things to come? There were obviously some things that Georgia Tech did well. Miami shot a season low there, uh, running a lot of different zone defenses, particularly that one three one there in the second half. Uh, what would you kind of make of it? Uh, and and kind of we'll get into that, how they bounced back, but anything in particular with that one that, that kind of look, looking back and, and stood out to you? Um, well, kind of both sides of that. So it was definitely disappointing. Um, didn't expect to lose to Georgia Tech, of course, none of us did, but, um, you know, it's a long season traveling involved holidays. There's going to be games that just get dropped and, and don't call for an overreaction. But, um, the part that was frustrating to me is that it looked like, okay, this is going to be one of those games we drop. And then all of a sudden, as great teams do, we came back, we took the lead and it looked like, all right, we're going to close this one out, um, get a win and get out of here. But then in the last couple of minutes, we ended up giving the game away. So it was uh, a little, a little frustrating, but like you said, I mean, the bounce back was great and, and it's a long season. You're going to drop games here and there um, and got to keep moving forward. Especially on the road, Coach Larnaga talks about that. Other ACC coaches talk about that, and just looking at you know that the, the day Miami beat Boston College, or there are four other ACC games, all the home teams won that day. So it's just difficult, you know. It, it, regardless of who you're playing, you know, if you're looking at some kind of big picture stuff, we'll get into it more. But you know, Duke and, and Virginia, two other teams that Miami's essentially looking forward to competing towards at the top, they lost that week too. So. There were disappointing things. Isaiah Wong, one for 11. He's been great all year. Just a, one of those games, he just didn't have it. And then, you know, just didn't have enough pick-me-up from the, from his teammates. You know, nor, nor Chad got in foul trouble. And like you said, it felt like they were going to – they had the game in hand, and it felt like a big turning point. If they just could have gotten a better possession when Norchad shoots that three, fouls out on the, on the rebound, and the crowd's kind of going crazy. And Miami just couldn't get over that hump there after he fouled out. Yeah, um, that's a big one. I figure we'll get into that at some point today. Um, but uh, Norshad's been amazing. There's not many negative things to say, but the foul trouble, um, it's becoming a problem. And and with our limited size, um, we got to try to get that under control because it's affected us in three games in a row now. Um, Virginia, when, when he fouled out, that's when they started to come back. Georgia Tech, same thing. Him fouling out, I think, was the beginning of the end there. And even last night, Boston College, um, even though we handled them pretty well in the beginning of the second half, when he picked up those fouls, he had to come out of the game. That's when they cut it from 15 to 8 and uh, got a little closer than we would have liked. So I think that the fouling from uh, Norchad, that's something that we do have to – work on because that will come back to bite us uh, down the line. Yeah. And he's so valuable, not just because of what he brings to the table, but because of what the guys off the bench are doing right now, um, not providing a lot. And so, the, you know, there's just a huge focal point with him on the court. Also coming into that game against Boston college, he had a wide lead on plus minus. So when he's on the court, he's outscoring uh, their Miami's outscoring their opponents. And he had the highest plus minus rating on the team. And he's not played the most minutes, so it just shows his value to this team on both ends. And and Norchad is certainly an interesting player. And and you know one, one thing we'll, we'll stay on Norchad, but one thing that's that I've kind of noticed with him is we talk so much about how he's going to defend other players, and he's a smaller guy. And 
look, other teams have to figure out how they're going to guard him. I mean, he could put the ball in the basket. He, he's tough around the rim. He's shooting over about 65% from inside the paint. Uh, he's just a tough force inside, and that, a guy that can score. And obviously, he's racking up rebounds. Did that again against Boston College, the 13 and 13 there, even though he dealt with a little bit of foul trouble. But I think he's becoming, or I think he is, such a positive impact. And I think other teams are looking at him and how are we going to stop 15? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, he's he's been incredible. Um, 14 and 10 on the year, like you said, 13 and 13 last night. And I think of it, it's it's kind of the double-edged sword because that motor and that work ethic and how hard he plays is why he's so great. But it's also why I think he's been picking up some fouls that he could do without. So overall, I mean, he, he's, I would say he's an A plus, but I do think he's so valuable um, that losing him in, in certain times of the game could really hurt us down the line. So Miami gets that 88 72 win over Boston college, go to 14 and two, that bounce back win. And what we saw in that game and coach Grant for BC was talking quite a bit, just how good Miami is offensively. The numbers are off the charts right now, 11th in the country, according to Ken Palm with efficiency and they're number one in the ACC in a lot of categories in conference games only. And I, I think that's just really impressive. Again, they're number one in offensive efficiency. They, again, just against ACC teams, they're number one in two-point field goal percent, number one in block percent, and steal percent. So doing a good job, hanging on to it, getting their shots off, and and getting a good shot. The only thing is the three-point shooting, but we, as we saw against BC, they, they made 12. So it's certainly in there, and they're going to look to keep that thing going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, I actually was watching the game uh, from home last night and I didn't realize, I think they said that Boston College was the worst three-point shooting team in the conference and the Canes were either second to last or third to last. So um, as somebody who watches all the games, I didn't even realize we were that low, but it was nice to see the guys bounce back. Um, we did hit some threes last night and kind of got back in that rhythm. Uh, but as always, you know, there's a couple couple of things that are interesting. The defense is just uh, we've been winning by outscoring. I mean, that when Boston College started to score, they started to come back and we held them off. But, you know, that's that's going to be interesting as we continue in the conference. Yeah, coach talked about that because Boston College cut it to six a couple of times there, particularly in the second half. And coach said, well, you know, the team that he has uh, with Coach Laranega just feels like that this is a team that when it gets tight like that, because they are good offensively, they tend to start um, kind of buckling down on offense, which is a little different. And I know he would like for the team to be a little better defensively. I, I, I kind of just sense some hesitation in terms of moving forward. Um, and hopefully they don't run into trouble. But certainly offensively, 20 assists, 32 made field goals last night. There were two sequences that really stood out to me in the game in terms of sharing the ball. And, and one of it was, you know, just being at practice. If you guys saw the video, I posted a video of Wuga Poplar getting a backdoor dunk in practice. So I watched the game and there was a play, same thing. Omir had it in the high post off to the wing. Look for Wuga there. Wuga was covered on the back door. So Omir gives the ball to Nigel. Nigel finds Wuga on, on the swing back around as Wuga cut through the lane and, and hit a three, you know, and it was interesting. And, and Nigel gets his bucket later and, and Norchad as well. So just sharing the ball and, and the ball comes back to these guys. And, and that's what we're seeing offensively. Obviously Isaiah and Jordan can score a lot. These, all the, all these guys can score, but they're just sharing the ball right now. And it looks great. Yeah, hundred percent. It, it does look great. Um, getting a little bit of scoring from everybody, but you don't really see any, any selfishness. If whoever's night it is, they kind of take, take the lead and everyone else follows where they can. So it's, it's super exciting. Um, I would agree that they buckle down on offense. I don't know, you know, long-term about that. That scares me a little bit, but Hey, it's been working and got to just keep winning. So what are your thoughts on, on Nigel here? Um, we're seeing some moments, you know, the percentage is coming up a little bit at times, uh, but you know, he's just not making shots at the level he was at K-State. Is there anything from a guard's perspective you're kind of seeing with him or your thoughts on him and, or is this just kind of what he's going to be kind of moving forward? Do you think? I have um, I have some bold thoughts on Nigel. I think that he's going to end up being great. I think that the transition is taking a little bit longer than we all thought, um, and he's having a little bit of trouble getting into his rhythm, getting into that flow. 
we saw him hit a huge shot against Virginia, um, which was needed to pull that one off. And then he put together three solid games there, you know, step back last night. But I think he's going to come up huge for us when we need it, when we least expect it. And I think going into next season, he's going to really step it up. I think that uh, people don't realize, you know, ACC basketball is is the best of the best. And I've always said that sometimes people try to say Big Ten. I'm an ACC guy, by far the best conference. And going from the Big 12 to the ACC is a huge adjustment. It's a different style of basketball. So I think he is going to be the player we all thought. I think he's going to really start to turn it up. Um, I just don't think it's happened yet, and and it's going to come soon. Yeah, to me, it seems like more of just an adjustment to a new team, a new team that's winning games. I mean, they've got other guys that can score, and that's the thing. Even when we're looking at numbers, as percentages from three is 35%, and most guards, you would take that. You know, he's just a guy that's been over 40 in his career. I just think he's got a chance to get closer to that 35 to 40 range once the season kind of gets, you know, as it gets towards the end. But, you know, he's a guy that you can't leave open, and that's ultimately uh, what it comes down to with Nigel. He'll work through some other things, whether it's, passing the ball or, or whatever it might be, but look, they've got other guys and, and that's the, 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 the big asset with this team and, and, and why it works. And, and I think Nigel just seems to be enjoying himself and he'll, he'll make shots as we've seen at times this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably the toughest part. That's a great point you brought up just trying to get in your own rhythm, but not disrupt a team that's winning games. So um, I think he's, He's doing it. It's taking a little bit longer, but look, when he, when he shoots the ball, it's one of the purest shots we've seen. The percentages speak for themselves. I think that it's going to start to come together for him um, when, right when we need it uh, towards the end of the season. Yeah. So just big picture for Miami, number 16 in the top 25. Uh, you know, one of the, the things to definitely pay attention to as we're kind of moving forward here, I, I'll get into the ACC standings in a bit, but just the net rating. And for people that don't understand what that might be, that's kind of essentially it replaced the RPI from years ago. Uh, net rating, Miami's up to 36. You know, they're kind of creeping up towards a, a higher mark there. And, you know, and I think it's only going to go up. The thing that stands out to me with their net rating is, they're five and one in quad one victories and their five quad one wins is only is there's only one team in the country that has more and that's Purdue number three team in the country with six and Miami's doing well right now. And I think they've done a good job and there's three non-conference games that, that I think are going to continue to hold up with a lot of weight that Miami got wins on. And that's Rutgers Providence and UCF. All three of those teams are certainly looking to try to be in the NCAA tournament as well. And I, I think those are going to end up being, good 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 non-conference wins regardless of what you thought about them at the time but I think that's only helping Miami and I think it's only going to increase their resume here totally agree I felt those wins were big at the time and and as the season goes on they're looking even nicer um sorry about that got a pop up um uh on the other hand I was actually surprised with Maryland uh when they beat us up and I thought they were going to be really good and they haven't really lived up to it this year but like you said overall big picture I mean 11th offensive efficiency those quad one wins are huge putting together a really nice uh body of work here yeah and Miami right now is in second in the ACC five and one Clemson kind of a surprise there's no doubt about it six and oh right now Virginia Duke are four and two a lot of teams are, are four and two so it's kind of this top half seven teams in the ACC are four and two or better and I think we're starting to get into some separation stuff and we'll kind of see this top half, bottom half kind of kind of get sorted out even more. And it's very intriguing right now. Miami's got a big one with NC State coming up. You know, Syracuse has played well at times. You know, Duke is just right around the corner. So there, there's some big games coming up. And one of the things Coach mentioned is they've got a lot of games. They have three games in a six-day span, you know, starting with that Boston College game. And they kind of have this quick turnaround uh, coming up here with Syracuse Monday. So NC State on, on Saturday is certainly going to be a big one. Yeah, absolutely. We got a big one against NC State. Um, you know, that was a tough game that we we came out with a win uh, at home. Got to try and pull one out on the road. And and like you said, it's a, it's about to get into the thick of it in the season. And, and Syracuse is another one that as the season goes on, they always get better and better. And so, you know, we're going to be playing them next after NC State and, and it's uh, going to be a better team uh, than probably expected. NC State, Miami faced each other in Coral Gable. So Miami won 80-7-3. to 
December 10th, Miami was down big and, and came back and won. What stood out to me was, you know, the team's top players all had big games. You know, with Miami, Jordan Miller had 25, Isaiah Wong 22 points. And then on the other side, and this is where I think it gets very interesting with NC State as a team in general. And it's going to be a big challenge for Miami because even though NC State's a little shorthanded right now with their bigs, you know, Jarkel Joyner, 26 points in that game. And Taquarvian Smith, 19 points in the game. And he's certainly one of the best guards, one of the best players in the ACC. And both the, all four of those guys on both sides ha- had big games. And it's going to be an interesting game uh, coming up here. And Miami certainly is going to have to be able to defend the perimeter, defend the guys. And kind of going back to that Georgia Tech game where Georgia Tech kind of maybe exposed Miami or, or at least certainly stymied their offense with their zone defenses that they employed. I, I don't see NC State doing that. You know, I think it, if it's not in your arsenal, NC State typically plays man. If it's not in what you typically like to do, it's not just an easy thing of, low. Oh, let's just throw a zone at them. If you're not good at it, it's not going to work the same. And I, I, I would expect, even though maybe they'll throw it in if they need to a little bit, I don't think it'll be like Georgia Tech, even though Georgia Tech had success. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that, you know, like like you said, and like Coach L mentioned, the road games are are going to be very tough. And this is already a good team. We we had trouble with them at home. I know from experience, playing at NC State is a really tough environment. Um, tons of fans, lots of energy, and now you take some of these great offensive players that they have and put them at their home court. So I think this is a game uh, where the defense has to really improve in order for us to come out with a win. And so I think we'll some, happens. yeah. And I think one thing to, to watch for because Smith and Joyner, I, I think they're going to play heavy minutes. I mean, Smith is coming off a game where he played 39. Joyner dealt with some foul trouble, but they're going to be out there quite a bit. And I think Miami's just got to make them work on the offensive end. And maybe, you know, if you're looking at some second half stuff to kind of wear them down a little bit, make them make it difficult for them, but they're going to get their own shots. You just got to make it difficult. And I, again, I expect them to play heavy, heavy minutes out there. And again, if, if they're low on their post numbers, the way it looks right now with, with their inside forces, uh, it, a lot of shots for, for Joyner and Smith and obviously Marcel too. So it, it's going to be difficult. And, and, and again, you know, Kevin Keith said this with NC state coach, he just expects a different, different game, even though it was the same teams kind of going at it, just kind of ex- expect something different. So we'll, we'll see how these teams shake out there. Uh, it's definitely a big one for Miami. Once again, as you keep mentioning, it's just going to be a tough one on the road. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, we're, no reason to to be to feel that we're not going to come out with a win, but it, it is going to be a different game than it was at home, and and we'll see we'll see what happens. Yep, and definitely stay tuned to the channel, to the website. Uh, Justin, I appreciate you taking the time. It's always good kind of chatting about this team. Uh, fans definitely get excited about it because this is a good team. Uh, they're a lot of fun to watch. Again, if you like offensive basketball, the way they move it can score it at different levels. A lot of fun. But all right, Justin, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Great chatting again, as always.